Hey guys, welcome back to Data Wrangling in R. Uh, we're going to continue on our journey throughout the tidyverse. There's a lot of times in your analyses that you're going to be able, or that you're going to find that you're going to be using multiple forms of input data. So you're going to have multiple spreadsheets, multiple pulls from different databases. Uh, you'll scrape files from the internet and have multiple files that you'll want to combine. Uh, so the tidyverse package makes this really easy and accessible to do with uh, the dplyr package. So dplyr will allow you to kind of combine these multiple data sets together into a single data frame. Uh, where you can then do calculations or manip manipulate it uh, the way that you want to do it. So let's get into it. All right, so first thing, let's annotate dplyr. And put that there. So uh, it is rare that you will be Dplyr package allows you to join two data tables based on common values. Seems intuitive and easy enough, right? Uh, so mutate, uh, mutate, we'll call mutate joins. Those add new variables uh, to one data frame from the matching observations and another. Then we have filtering joins. And filtering joins uh, filters observations from one data frame based on whether or not They are present in another. And then lastly, we have uh, set operations, and it treats uh, observations as they are set elements. And so we'll get into these here. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, um, if it's not loaded already, is to open uh, Tidyverse or load the Tidyverse package. And we also want to do the Airplane data again just because everyone has it, you don't have to load it independently. Uh, so let's do this. Uh, so give you full carrier names based on letter codes. Uh, give you, that no, doesn't sound right. So let, um, let's say, let's pull full carrier names based on letter codes. So we're going to type in airlines and look at that built in data set. Um, oops, maybe I should actually run these two. And now let's pull airlines. And so you see here, we have the carrier, uh, the name of the airline and the carrier code, right? So American Airlines is AA, makes sense. Um, let's look at another data set. Um, let's get info about airports. So if we type in airports, that's another data set from this NYC flight data set. So you can see we have all the different airports here and where they're located um, and their actual geographical information. So the latitude, the longitude, the altitude, etc. cetera. Um, let's, let's get info about each plane. So we can type in planes and run that. See, this is a tibble where we have the tail number of the plane, what type of plane it is, um, who manufactured the plane, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, let's get some info on the weather at the airports. Okay, so we type in weather, run that. We see that we have airport year, month, day, hour, the temperature, the dew point, humidity, all sorts of good weather information. Um, and let's do, uh, let's get info on singular flights. So each plane obviously flies more than one flight a day, so we get um, multiple flight data, so we'll do flights, and you see that we have uh, the actual 
year, month, day, departing time, scheduled departure time. So this, we use this before to calculate delays, right? Okay. So um, without getting too spending too much time on it, um, let's look at how these tables connect. So one example is um, flights connects, we'll just draw an arrow like that, to planes based on tail number. So if we look at uh, flights, it's there's nine more variables. Um, so it's not shown on here, but within here, uh, it should show it down here. So tail number. So flights has tail number in it. And flights, what did you say, connected to planes. Where's the planes data set? Weather, planes. You see we also have tail number here. So those are two common variables or keys as we call them uh, where they connect. Um, so I'm not going to go through, I'm just going to list some of these um, so we don't have to um, go, but believe me they, they connect in these ways. Um, so flights to airlines through the carrier trait or carrier uh, column. Um, flights to airports and oops, let's keep it consistent here. Flights connects to airports um, through origin and destination uh, and flights connects uh, flights let's keep this here, uh, to weather Video, origin, and then year, month, day, hour, like the combination of those four uh, codes. So, so there is relation. So you can see how we're kind of building, how we're going to kind of relate these tables together. So, like I said, we can use those as keys. And so, what a key is is when we do these joins or this. Um, these tables together with the plier, we need to tell R how we want to match them up. And so if we want to combine, say, flights and uh, planes, we can say, okay, match all those values based on the tail the numbers matching, right? So um, keys are unique identifiers per observation and primary key uniquely identifies an observation in its own table. So this means that primary keys, there's only one unique one per table. You can have secondary keys which identifies a row in a different table. We're not going to get too much uh, into the weeds uh, in that regard. Um, so one way to identify a primary key is as follows. So we can actually use R to identify our primary keys. Um, so we're going to say planes, we're going to type it down, we're going to say count, tail num. So we're going to count every single tail number, and then we'll pipe down one more line, and we'll say filter where n is greater than 1. So what this is going to do is it's going to take the planes data table, or the tibble. It's going to count every single tail number in that data table and then give us all of them that are equal to, uh, that are greater than one. So if that tail number appears more than one time, it's going to tell us, right? So we do it and we say tibble is zero times two. That means that there's two columns, but zero times that the tail number appears more uh, than one time in the data table. So it's a unique key. Um, so this indicates the, that the tail number is unique. Perfect. That's what we want in a key. Um, sometimes there are no unique identifiers. And you, uh, so actually before we do that, um, so let's look at planes again. Run that. 
So we said tail number was unique. Let's try model number. Let's do the same thing, just for reference. Um, so model. So if we run this now, we see that we have a lot of duplicates, right? So this uh, 717 200, there's 88 uh, counts of it in the table. And the 737, uh, the 3H4 model, 105 counts. So this wouldn't be unique. So this is what it would look like if you had a not unique identifier. Um, okay guys, let's work on mutate now. So mutate is a way of joining uh, data from two tables. So we'll call it a mutate join in our little banner here. And so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a data set called flights two. We are going to pull the data from uh, flights and then pipe down and we'll select year through, through day, hour, origin, destination, tail number, and carrier. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to run this and then I'm going to print flights to, oops. So scroll way up there. Print flights two. You can see we got year, month, day, hour, origin, destination, tail number, and carrier. So what if we want to add the actual name of the company instead of just these carrier two-digit IDs, right? Uh, so let's take flights two, and then let's first let's drop off the origin um, and the destination. So we put a minus sign for select, meaning get rid of them, uh, just so we can fit it all on one in one tibble on one page so you can see it. Um, we're gonna do a left join, left left, left join uh, with the airlines data set, and we're gonna do it by carrier. So what we should be doing here is we took our flights to this data frame down here. We're gonna get rid of origin and destination. Then we're gonna look into the airlines, um, this table, and say every time we see 9E, fill in that new column called uh, names with the actual name, okay? So let's run it and see if it worked. Beautiful, so we dropped off the origin and destination uh, like we said there, and we've added the names column based on uh, the carrier. So perfect. Um, let's annotate this. Uh, so we've now added the airline name to our data frame from the airline data frame. Um, so uh, let's talk about other types of joins here. So there are things called, uh, so there's inner joins as well. Um, it's the inner join function. Um, and so that matches a pair of observations uh, when their key is equal. And then there is also outer joins, which is the outer join function, and that uh, keeps the uh, observations that appear in at least one table. So it will essentially add a lot of NAs, right? Because if it appears in one table and it doesn't have a value in the other, it'll still pull those values and put them in, but for the ones that are missing, it just doesn't put anything in. In this case, uh, for our left join, it wouldn't work if there was missing values. It would say, it would throw up an error if there's missing values. Okay, so that's the dplyr package. Um, I hope that you enjoyed uh, 
uh, this little lecture. Um, it's chopped up a bit because there were some issues uh, throughout <laughs> creating this lecture. So sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, and so we're going to be getting into strings next. And so strings are really important for bioinformatics because strings obviously are just like words, long lists of letters. Uh, and in bioinformatics, that is what we work with a lot of times with FASTA or FASTQ files where we have text files. So strings are um, very important to be able to manipulate and search through and stuff like that. So be prepared to work with strings next and I will catch you in the next one.